Okay, let's talk about homework 6b where we're going to make a one dimensional game of Connect 4. Cool. So here's the write up. Please read it carefully and follow the instructions closely. Uh, it's one dimensional Connect 4. It's inspired by this wonderful project right here. Uh, it's worth just pointing out this project. It's so cool. Somebody uh, shows you how to build a physical version of this uh, game where they figured out how to play one dimensional uh, four in a row or Connect 4. And they show you the, everything you need to do to physically build it. And then eventually they also tell you the rules down here somewhere here. And we slightly adapted, very slightly adapted the rules. So follow ours, not theirs. But anyway, this is the inspiration for it. Okay. So uh, now let's actually play the game so we could talk about it. So I have a solution here. I'm going to show you. Here's a sample solution running. It's one dimensional connect four. And here's all the rules. Uh, and this is how your app should look. Let me actually get this out of the way so it's very clear. Uh, so uh, you have some instructions on how to play up here. Uh, down here you have the rules of Connect 4. Uh, the rules are you arrange these pieces in a row, alternating green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. Uh, however, sometimes when you start, I'm restarting now to show you, it's blue, green, blue, green, blue, green. So it's random if you start on green or blue. Okay, Whichever one you start on is also going to be the current player. Uh, you take turns moving three pieces at a time. So the pieces must be in the interior. They can't include either end adjacent to each other. And um, at least one of them must be your color. So it's green's turn. So green could choose like these three in a row or these three in a row. And the way you select your block uh, of three is you click on a piece and that's the center piece of the selection. So if I click here, it's pink because it's, that's an illegal selection because it includes an end piece and it's not allowed to uh, include an end piece. Okay. So once you have a valid uh, selection, uh, then you can move it to either end. Okay. So you can move it to this end or this end. When you move it to the end, let's say I'm going to move it to this end. These two pieces are going to slide over the right and these three are going to go around it and become the end. So when I click here, what will happen is it'll go green, blue, green, and then green, blue, blue. Click here, green, blue, green, green, blue, blue. There it is. So I can select, now it's blue's turn. See how this changed to blue? Okay, so now that it's blue's turn, let's say that I want to get two blues on the right. What I'll do is I'll, I'll select, because this is going to slide over, I'll select these three. Actually, give me three on the right, because now when these go over here, these two blues will wind up next to that blue, give me three in a row. I click there, and there it is. There's my three blues. You might want to, review what I just said a couple times. Anyway, the point is you keep doing this uh, until you get four in a row and then you win. So let's actually make a win happen here. So if I wanted to make a win, let's do say this. Uh, and that was a bad move by green, even though it got three in a row because blue can take these three here, plunk them on this end and get four in a row and win. And when you win, it says game over in the color of the winner and draws a line through the winning four in a row. And that's it. That's one dimensional uh, connect four. Okay. Now let's look up here. It says uh, click interior piece to uh, select the center of a three piece block. Okay. We know that. Click the end piece to move that block. So anytime you click an end piece, you're trying to move. You're not trying to make a selection of a center. Change the board size and then restart with arrow keys. So if I go up, here I go. Let's restart. If I go up, up gives me more. Down gives me fewer, up more, down fewer. Also, left left is going to be the same as down, and right is going to be the same as up. Okay, cool. Now, you'll notice that it changes in twos, uh, not ones, because you have to have an even number, so just as many greens as, as, as blues. So it goes up and down by twos. Plus, as I go down, for, you, you can't go below six. Okay, and you might notice that the uh, dots are actually growing as there's fewer of them because they fill horizontally. Okay, cool. Uh, and then for um, debugging purposes, pressing C changes the color of the selected block. So I'll select a block here. It's green's turn. So when I press C, it makes them all green. Okay. And when I press C, they're all green again. Uh, that's pretty helpful now because I can simply go here and it helps me really easy, easily uh, create a winner. Also pressing P changes the current color. So if I hit P, notice over and over again, look up here, the current uh, it's blue's turn, it's green's turn. It's blue. So P lets me change the uh, current player, uh, which is again, good for debugging. And anytime you press R, you restart. Whether or not a selection is made, you restart. Notice when you restart, 
uh, it does not change the number of, of uh, pieces. Also, uh, if I resize, let's just look at what happens here, okay? As I resize, the text on the bottom, really nothing's happening. The text at the top remains centered, and the, no and the number of dots remains constant. It doesn't change the number of dots, but the dots change size in, because they're going to remain evenly spaced across the middle, and they can get a little bigger if they have a little more room. Just a little bit. Okay, there you go. So that's essentially it in terms of how this works. Uh, and then let's go back and look at the write-up and talk a little bit about that. Okay, so here's our write-up. So this clue right here, this hint, is really important. Do not represent your dots. Do not represent these dots as pixel locations. Internally, you want to represent them in a one-dimensional list uh, where you might, for instance, have players, where the list right now would be 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, where player 0 is green, for example. And then when you want to refer to a dot, you refer to it, or to a, play, a piece, you refer to it by its index, not by its XY location. Uh, using indexes is significantly cleaner in your, in your logic. Uh, we ca I can't stress enough how important it is that the only time you use pixels is for two things. When you're actually drawing, of course, it has to be in pixels. And the other thing is uh, when the mouse is pressed, the mouse is pressed and you get an XY. What you want to do in mouse pressed is immediately convert that XY into the index of the dot that you clicked inside of, or if you click outside of a dot, just convert it to none. Uh, and then you no longer have to deal with X's and Y's. Cool. That's, this is a very important hint. Uh, this is the same hint. It tells you how to store the board as a 1D list of zeros and ones, as an example. Uh, and there's more hints. I'm not going to walk you through every hint. What I'm going to tell you is take your time to read these hints carefully. There's a lot of good hints here for you. We tell you how to set up a draw function. You can add your own additional draw methods. We actually have a couple others that, are, that these draw uh, functions call. Um, and then, you know, understand how anchors work. The reason that matters is here, this text right here is anchored so that we uh, specify this right edge of it. And this text here is anchored so we specify the left edge of it. And this tells you how to do that. We tell you which colors we use. We gave you all the strings we used. In fact, here we give you a list of strings. Okay, these are the exact strings. See the C rules below, click interior piece. Those are these strings right here. And the way we drew this is we had a for loop that just went through this list, and this is what you should do, and then drew each one where we had, an in, based on the index, we set the Y value of the te uh, create text call based on the index. Uh, we did the same basic thing with this list of strings uh, for the rules. And then there's some more additional hints here. Uh, remember magic numbers you can use for graphics layout, that's okay. Uh, and also we tell you how to use random numbers here. Uh, I certainly want to read that, and I believe that that's, uh, essentially, all you need, again, read, the, read, read this very carefully. Any time you spend reading this, uh, we'll pay back dividends uh, by shortening the amount of time that you're going to spend actually writing this. Uh, finally, we really hope that you collaborate on this. And remember, if you do collaborate, collaboration is not uh, one person writing one part and one person writing another and then just copying each other's. Uh, that's the opposite of collaboration. Good collaboration is the two of you working together closely on all parts of this. You'll spend less time on it, you'll have less stress, and you'll have more fun doing it that way. And then the last thing is, if you're so inclined, down here, just like last uh, time we did something like this, there's bonus if you hit the exclamation, uh, and then you can have bonus features uh, that you might put here, and I can imagine any kind of uh, bonus features. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, good luck, have fun, and um, that's all for now.